used to be a rogue's answer into the Twisted Fate. They basically prevented the TF from ever being able to roam around the map, and they would use Triss to like perma push in mid lane and force the TF underneath the tower. And if you ever did roam, you basically lose your tower. Um, it was something that Larson was very comfortable on and something that back in the day they did leverage quite a lot. But of course, you do need that AP jungle threat, and that's also why I mentioned that Lilia. For now, Rogue is just going to prioritize getting themselves a strong 2v2 bot lane. We talked about the Leona being up, and with Nami and Yumi both removed, this then becomes the next premier bot lane. It does make sense for Rogue to put a lot of eggs in that bot lane basket. Hansama and Trimby have been having a stellar tournament so far, but immediately into it, it's going to be Draven alongside what looks like a Thresh here for Dom. It's looking scary right now for Rogue with Draven and Thresh in the bot side of the map. This is a very potent two versus two, but remember the last time that they met, it was Rogue getting the better in the two versus two up against Ghost and Beryl. So a lot of eyes will be on this Draven and we know that Han Summer is more than equipped to play into a champion that he is known for. Yeah, he'll definitely be comfortable down towards that bottom side. Ghost and Beryl, not always the most stellar players on Dom 1, often just utility ro uh, role players more than anything else. Rise now locked in for Rogue. Larson's going to take that and try and follow Showmaker on some of these roams. Let's see, because to be honest, Larson really hasn't been getting out of lane very often. Uh, even during the regular season, he wasn't known for his roaming style. Uh, and that kind of, when you looked at players like Niski, when you look at players like Caps, Humanoid, these are all uh, players that kind of got the better of him due to their roaming nature. And now you're going against Showmaker, who literally has a skin for the <laughs> champion that he is playing. You know how he's going to find those opportunities to get impact on the map. It really feels like Worlds is defined by mid-jungle roams. Support's going up there, teaming up around that Herald as well. And uh, Larson has been struggling. I had a, a quick look at some of his numbers, Betty. 20% of his team's damage. Very low for a mid laner compared to Showmaker. A full 6% more of his team's total damage. Showmaker having a good tournament. Larson being a little bit invisible from time to time. As we move into the second phase, though, Graves banned away. Jarvan taken out of the pool as well. Thresh, of course, okay into the Jarvan. You can fly away the flag drag combo. Does the same with the Leona Zenith blade. So that Jarvan, just a respect ban. Want to get rid of some of the ability to get those early ganks off. They're just removing the strong team fighting tools. Remember last time it was the team fighting that Darwin almost lost to. And when we kind of look at the siege, I think that Darwin's siege isn't as weak as it was the last time that they played up against each other. Uh, but still, they're showcasing that respect. They know that it could be a pretty safe blind. And right now, Rogue is definitely looking to lock in their jungler. I'm thinking of things like Viego uh, with the Xin Zhao band away as well. We're definitely heading towards a Talon Kiana once again. The last time that they did meet, it was Canyon bringing out his uh, Talon and he played it into Inspired's Fiddle, which he dominated the early game with, and it definitely helped that Khan was able to get a solo kill top lane. Actually, looks like Rogue might be keeping their jungler for last here, not getting the top lane counter pick instead, picking the Jace for Oda Wamne. First time he's brought that here at Worlds. Of course, Jace, a very contested pick, as you mentioned earlier on, Vedius, and now Dom won't have to work out. How do you answer this in the top lane? Do you just go for something that can soak up the pressure? Do you go for something that will try and trade back? And alongside that, what are you going to put Canyon on? You're going to give him this Kiana that's been tearing up the rift. It certainly looks like it. I think that Oduamne just wants to get himself comfort. You know, he, he hasn't had the best tournament. Jace is something that he's played throughout his entire career. Yep. And it is generally a safe top side. And also a, a lane that you can easily play through or you can leave on the weak side with the itemization changes that happened. Uh, Jace really benefited and really does scale so much better uh, than he used to with that full lethality build of old. For now though, Darmon, they're gonna get themselves the Kiana and it looks like they're trying to match the aggression on the top side of the map. It will be Khan's Lucian. So we talked about them wanting a strong top side. Khan is definitely gonna be putting a lot of weight behind his carry potential. And it just makes those rooms from Twisted Fate even more deadly as well. You get up there, you gold card Oduwamne, and then you have the Light Slinger himself just chipping away at that Jace's health bar. Does mean that Darmwan are a very squishy team as a whole, though. Obviously, Gore Drinker will contribute for Canyon in the jungle, but the rest of the team, very easy to lock down. Now, this Olaf is a bit of a throwback because for those that don't know, when Inspired first joined the league, he was known as an Olaf one trick. Yep. The Rogue's win rate was something like 80 to 90% with Olaf, and then they, they didn't win any other games. <laughs> Basically, whenever he got his hands on this champion, they would win. 
domestically. Now, he hasn't really been bringing it out in recent history. I actually can't remember this year if he's he even has. played it uh, during the regular season at all. So the fact that Inspired is going back to this, yes, Blabber is known for his Olaf, but Inspired, perhaps he can look to emulate Blabber's success on the champion as well, and they need it. They are currently sitting at one and three in the group. If they can get a win over Damwon, this Rook this group becomes very interesting indeed. It's not completely over for Rogue, but their chances become that much higher. We have some very interesting compositions. Uh, Rogue going for much more of a team fight. They have very strong side lanes as well. They have solid engage. Overall, a very well-rounded comp. They seem to have a lot of options all across the board. Down one, they're going to be looking to attack side lanes. They're going to be looking for picks. If they get ahead, it's going to be very difficult to stop the snowball with champions like Draven, Lucian, Kyan and Twisted Fate. If they get their hands on the steering wheel, they are not going to let go. Darmon have been steering themselves to success for the last week of groups. Now they're looking to make it 5-0 and oh in this matchup versus Rogue. As we've said, Rogue are not out of it at all. If they lose this game, they can still find that three-way tie with FPX and with Cloud9. But a win here would actually accelerate them into the possibility that they could take it all, that they could get that second seed unperturbed by anyone else without having to play a tiebreaker. They're coming off the back of a disappointing loss for them against Cloud9 earlier on today. And Damwon Kia fresh off a dominant victory earlier today as well. Yeah, it, it's... <laughs> I, I've been reading a lot of the comments for EU fans and I can I can see the frustration because it often feels like that in, in the first game, you know, that level one, the way in which they're playing, you know, this isn't typically what you see from Rogue. And we can hear from the uh, Rogue fans if you want. You can use the hashtag Verizon 5G all chat. You can send your support. Obviously, it is a very huge uphill battle to be able to take down Dan One, but uh, I can feel that frustration. I understand that frustration. I know a lot of EU fans want to see this rogue perform, but let's see if they can do it. They had a pretty crazy game the last time. You and I were casting that. Yeah, we were. Remember, we were at five minutes. We were like, well, this game's over. And then it <laughs> went for so much longer. It was very dramatic indeed. So nothing too crazy here at level one. Olaf is going to start on his Raptors, and he may very well be going for a very fast level three. Obviously, Olaf, one of the quickest clears in the jungle early on. Undertow gives you a relatively good amount of AoE, and the lower you go, the quicker you clear. It makes it very easy for you to speed your way through farming. Kiana, a little bit slower, doesn't quite have as much damage, but already working her way through that blue buff. Bottom lane is definitely somewhere you will look to as a point of hope for Rogue. Han Summer and Trimby have been performing well throughout the entirety of Worlds, and it was actually off the back of Han Summer last time that Rogue were able to get back into the game. Certainly was, but you know, they've drafted Draven Thresh, and this is also kind of a lane that you want to try and leverage. The thing about Darmon is they've got a lot of strong lanes all across the board, uh, and while they will be able to get Pryo up towards the top side of the map with this Lucian early on, uh, I'm not as convinced that they'll be able to do the same in the bot side. That level two in the bot lane is going to be really important, and it looks like the Han Sama and Trimby will get it first. So Ghost and Barrel forced to showcase that respect and inspired based on his pathing, doing a full clear top side. Notice that he's done Raptors into Krugs to go for the most optimal jungle route in terms of getting those camps respawning very, very quickly and leveraging the fact that Olaf has such a fast clear speed. Pathing towards the bot side of the map, but I'm curious as to how Canyon will play the next few minutes, because Showmaker does have Pryo in mid. We've got to Remember, Kiana, very early on against an Olaf, you do not want to run into him. Especially with the rogue bottom lane pushing in as well, you know that they can react a little bit quicker than your own laners. It means that that bot side scuttle cab may just be given over to Inspired, but Showmaker back in, does have the TP to get back to this lane, will use it. Gets all three Corrupting Potion stacks back alongside Boots and that Control Ward. So Showmaker there was running a little bit low on mana, running a little bit low on health, decides to invest his Teleport to be able to get Pryo over this lane once again. It's also just really important that you get that base because he knows that these crabs are going to be spawning soon. And he's just, he's now, he's upper back against Larson. Larson wants to go back to base as quickly as possible. Uh, and he's not going to be given the opportunity to. But for the time being, it looks like that Kiana knows the situation that, well, Kiana Canyon knows the situation that he's in, decides not to try and contest the bot crab. And I think that he may actually just concede both. He may just pass back up towards top, continue his full clear, and not gamble running into that Olaf in the early game. Yeah, a bit of a diffy in the clear speed there. You can see Inspired already on the Scuttle Crab while the Krugs were being started up by Canyon. So that early. Speed in the jungle from Olaf paying dividends. Now we'll see Showmaker work his way up towards the top side just to see if this Scuttle Crab has been taken. He notes it's not, pings it out, 
And uh, this means that Canyon can work his way. Lots of question mark pings on where Showmaker would have been, so maybe Inspired wondering if perhaps this location is now warded. Well, the really important thing here is Khan actually has control over the top wave for now. He would be able to move into the river first, and now that Larson has actually been able to TP back in, there's a way in which Rogue could contest this, but Inspired is saying, no, I don't want to run the risk. I'm not taking the gamma right now, so Canyon will actually secure himself a crab. Now, and engage. Then it's played onto Beryl, Ignite taking as well. He's going to flash away Trimby with a flash of clips. Damage is big, but Beryl should be able to walk out of this one. Sun's still coming out. Trimby low as well, as both of the bot laners will just back away. So Trimby, he thought that he could get enough damage down with another Q to be able to secure a kill, but not quite enough damage. Now Inspired looking for a play top. Odo looking for the slow here. Khan's going to try and dodge in into Odo, and Odo has just gone too deep. Flash away. Khan will flash forward, get first blood. Undertow is going to land. Inspired will be able to clean this one up, but look at the wave under the tower. Inspired might try and hold this one outside of turret range so that Odo can TP back in. But Khan continues to display his dominance in the top lane. Odo Amne was playing into a huge wave, and Khan took advantage of it, knowing that he was level five, knowing that he would be able to trade kills. He does a fantastic job and he's able to punish him. But now Inspired still hovering in this bush and Khan, he's aware, he knows what could happen and he doesn't get punished by it. Great awareness from Khan and the fact that he's able to trade one for one there, really best case scenario for Dom. Just really intelligent stuff from Khan. Obviously did have to invest his flash into doing it, invested his TP to get back to the lane, but because of that, he is now in a strong position in this lane with the pickaxe double longsword. Now hits level six as well. Inspired will note that Khan is still here, and you actually saw Trimby roaming all the way up on that first recall as well, perhaps wondering if Dunwon would bring Canyon over here to try and make a play, but they decide against it. So both supports will just pass like ships in the night in the mid lane as uh, their mid laners try and get this wave stacking into their opposing tower. So one for one on the kill boards. The gold is dead even. And I can tell you right now, Rogue's early game going much better than it did last You time. don't say. But that might change very quickly because look at this, Showmaker, level six. He's going to move into the fog of war, already moving into the river. Canyon has the, oh, it's it's doomed. Odo Amne's 100% dead right now. <laughs> There's just no way you get out of this one. Odo Amne, no flash. Canyon's just going to walk around the corner. Two they don't more waves. Showmaker. They'll wait for the minions to push in. They'll take aggro. Odo Amne, 300 health and a dream is all he can do, but Canyon takes the kill. Very easy dive from Canyon. And again, it comes from the top dip. Canyon is just schooling on Odo Omne right now. A great utilization of the culling to get Odo Omne low enough. Darwin was trying to stack a wave and set up a dive, and then Showmaker was like, oh, you don't even need me. So he still has his ultimate available. He can still use it for any potential skirmishes that come through. And Darwin, once again, are finding advantages in the top lane. Khan has really come to this world to party uh, after missing out on a trophy last year as FPX didn't even make it to Worlds before that, of course, only getting to the semi-finals with SKT. Perhaps he wants a World Championship trophy on his mantelpiece, just like everyone else on this dumb one Kia lineup. Inspired looking for the Scuttle Crab here, does have a level advantage over Canyon, and because Odawamne is here and Khan is not, should be the third Scuttle Crab of the game going over to Rogue. I mean, also Canyon's five, Inspired six. Yeah. Uh, you, uh, you just don't want to take that fight and it's not worth the risk. Meanwhile, the good news for Rogue is that they do have a CS advantage in the bot lane. Han, Sama, and Trimby doing very well in the two versus two. Expect to see the supports roaming soon once again. Showmaker's going to be donated the blue buff, has switched over to the Ignite. Now let's see Larson going to look for a recall as he spends his mana. And this could be a window for Showmaker to look for a play. The bot lane needs to be careful here. Showmaker's going to notice that he has gone missing. Where's that? His... Oh, sorry, I thought I heard the ultimate. <laughs> <laughs> heard the sound of a destiny, but I think it was just the red buff that I heard. Keeping an eye on Khan as well. Look at how he pushes out his top wave, moves into Fog of War, and just creates that point of pressure. Of course, there is that Scuttle Crab as well that uh, will spot him out, but Fog of War is such a powerful thing. And again, you'll see, you'll see Showmaker doing it all the time. Look at how he just moves into the river. Every single time, he doesn't have a wave that he needs to clear. And he's basically just saying, hey, Odo Amne, remember me. I'm still hovering around here. Anything you try to do, I will stop you. It's just that threat. You can see Inspired here with Larson trying to clear out some of this vision. Larson even putting the lane ward down there. So if Showmaker backs back towards his tower out of vision, they can at least know where he's going or know whether or not he is moving with that destiny. Inspired was able to secure the first dragon of the game. Now looking for the second neutral objective as Trimby and Larson are waiting in the wings to help him out, if so required. And as you say, it's a, a relatively good start here for Rogue, considering how far they fell behind last time. They are about a thousand gold in the hole, 
as Edu, just Edu, says, let's go rogue, we still believing. Really, oh, here comes another ultimate from Khan. Yeah, I think it's really important for the fans to keep showing their support. Um, Rogue is obviously in a very difficult position, being one and three. But if they can get a win here and a win against FPX, they may not need any tiebreakers at all to make it out of this group. Now, Canyon is in the top lane. Spider will be rooted. Odin one may stepping forward still. They know, of course, that that culling is down. But Showmaker wasn't really in position to move for that one. But the most important thing is Showmaker would have gone there way before Larson would have noticed that he was killing the Wolves on the bot side of the map. Didn't have the TP as well. So Rogue, not a play worth investing in as Darwin now invest or extend their goal lead to about 1,000. And the reason why they were able to get that was because while Trimby was hovering around mid lane, while Rogue was trying to cover for Larson, that actually left Han Summer alone in the bot lane. And you'll notice that the CS has now swung back in favor of Ghost as he secured himself a plate as well. Alongside that, of course, Twisted Fate passive just gives you so much more gold generally. And you can see Larson about five, six CS up, you know, up to about 10 now in that middle lane. But Showmaker will be racking up the stacks. It's a 33% chance to get six extra gold from every minion. And you're guaranteed to get at least one. You gotta, you gotta count your pennies in games like this, you know? Getting towards that Everfrost first, getting towards that Rapid Fire Cannon are such big spikes of damage and big spikes of utility for the Twisted Fate. What I think is really interesting, though, is uh, Larson is just stealing camps. <laughs> Whenever he sees an opportunity, he's taken the Wolves. Uh, I think he's also taken a Raptors once as well. And basically inspired wherever he is on the map, Larson is using that as an opportunity to just clear camps so that these camps are constantly being recycled and coming up as often as possible. So Rogue doing their best to try and keep the gold as close as possible, but Khan is going to get himself another plate. Odo Omni realizes that Showmaker may look for a roam up towards the top lane. He doesn't have information on where Kanyan could be. Kanyan. <laughs> I mean, well, you may as well call them together Kanyan. so much. <laughs> uh, and that's the thing. He is worried about the Kanyan duo just hovering around the top side. He could be sitting in that tri brush right now and speak of the devil. Kanyan is already on his way up. And look at all this vision they have in the river as well. So much control over the top side. Don't want to know what their win condition is. And they're continuing to invest resources into it. Feels like Rogue are just playing to set up for this next dragon. They can get two on the board by about the 12 minute mark. If they do, they still have that Rift Herald as well to apply pressure while they go for it. And because of that, Ono Omne has to back all the way away. Kanyan and Khan. The buddy system here in the top lane as Rogue just play around the bottom side of the map. And because of this, Darmwon will be able to get probably all of these turret plates down by the 14 minute mark without even having to use a Herald. Rogue are going to try and answer by throwing the Herald down in mid. I don't think they'll be able to secure this, but they want to try and get themselves at least some plates and get some decent damage down. Larson will be the benefactor of this, but let's see if they can collapse now. Things are coming down. That's the calling just a chip, a chip away at Odo name will be another plate. Four plates for Khan here on the top lane. And even though that gold looks relatively even, look at the difference. 1,400 gold right now between those two top laners. It really has been a top diff this game. And like, yes, Canyon and Showmaker have been hovering, but you have to give so much credit to how well Khan is playing in the 1v1. Tiny thing. There's a ward just up by the tier two in the top lane that spotted Trimby going around for a roam and immediately Khan backs away. Darmwon actually using the time that they had here to get that deep vision for Khan, meaning that he's so much safer in this top lane, knowing when the support can roam around. Solar Flight coming out. Realm Warp's going to be used here by last as well, they look to Showmaker. He's burnt the flash to try and get away, and Rogue are trying to add one more to their board. TP's coming in, Showmaker down, and now Khan, not in the best of situations, could get chased down by Oduwamne, but instead he goes in with the Gale Force and immediately Larson flashes the hell out of there. Ends up being a trade of flashes, an investment of two teleports, but ultimately Rogue do come out on top. They will alleviate some of the pressure that Khan has been putting down into the top lane. They will also remove the ultimate factor from Showmaker, and Ro will relieve some of the pressure that Darmon has been putting down. So I respect the proactivity here from Rogue. If they sit around and do nothing, then Darmon will eventually take control of the game. And Rogue is saying we're not down and out just yet. Here's the thing, Betty. I'm going to put my EU4 hat on for a second. Okay. I am an LEC caster. Rogue have done something no other team at Worlds 2021 could do. Tell me. Kill Showmaker. Oh. Up until now, he was unkilled. I'll bring up his stats because they're actually absolutely phenomenal. 47 KDA, 
gold lead of almost a thousand at the 15 minute mark. Huge kill participation. The man is a monster. He continues to be, but he is no longer unkilled. His KDA is now cut in half. And if EU oh, can't no, be that, that's infinite at that point. So ah, that's yeah, actually, right. that's actually, actually his still official at one. KDA. He's now at still one. 42. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, so they need to kill him again. Is what you're yeah, and then it will only be. You, you know? know, small achievable goals. You know? <laughs> <laughs> we honestly, how achievable is killing the raid boss and showmaker? I guess we'll find out. Three man collapse on the top side of the map. Khan, now. The shoe could be on the other foot here, but I can't. Just turn it in. Rune Prison's gonna get coming out there, and there's the solar flare for the follow up. Last enable just to dodge at the edge of range, keep Khan interested. And in the end, Khan was can't. So, Darn One, though, still trading on the other side of the map. You know, they're never gonna give anything up for free. While Rogue are able to get a kill onto Khan, it should still be the first tower of the game going down in favor of Darmon. Ghost is going to be the benefactor. 395 Draven stacks waiting to be picked up somewhere. We'll see if he's able to convert them into anything. And Hans Summer, he is down a level. He is behind a little bit on gold, but itemization, they are still even. So the gold is basically neutralized. The difference, I'm pretty confident, is basically in Showmaker's additional gold. Unlikely, because Khan, even though he has died. Let's have a look here. So 1,200 still the difference at the top. Oh, I mean, credit to Larson. Of course, picking up that kill means that he's now a th well, 900 ahead of Showmaker. So, yeah, it's uh, this is, I think, outside of that win that they had against Cloud9, the best early game that Rogue has had this yep. tournament. <laughs> I mean, I think the big thing is we haven't really seen a Destiny be incredibly proactive. Like, we haven't really yeah. seen Showmaker getting out of this middle lane and affecting the other lanes. And yes, Khan was able to develop a lead in the top lane with the help of Canyon, but a lot of the time, if you can keep Showmaker under wraps in the early game, you can kind of contain Darmon Kia. Definitely feels like that. For now, there is a tower in the top lane that Darmon have their eyes on. It is, of course, very low and they want to grab that for themselves. I believe that was the Destiny coming out from Showmaker, just to get a little bit of information. They know that everyone from Rogue is hovering around the red buff. Oduwamne, let me have a quick look. He doesn't have his TP. So Darmon, with five members strong, are going to say, well, you can't contest this. We know you can't contest this. And Rogue is saying, that's fine. We'll trade it for a tier one in the bot. You're going to secure our tier one in the top lane anyway. So let's just make this a fair trade across the board. Han Summer also, look at his positioning right now. Just showing the utmost respect. He knows that three members of Rogue are in the top lane. Trimby deciding not to commit to the fight. And again, it's really important to appreciate how much quicker it, quicker it would be for Darmon to collapse. And while Trimby was looking at that, saying, I could engage here, if they do, they're likely going to find themselves in a numbers disadvantage. And with uh, Lucian on this type of itemization at this point in the game, you probably should just avoid the fight for the time being. Yeah, you don't really want to take a fight versus a Gale Force Sheen already complete on Khan, building up towards the Essence Reaver. He's a very, very strong top laner. And as you said, Oduwami mean, not having TP just means that Rogue have to back away. Is it a tower for tower trade? And for the first time, it feels like this game, Rogue have actually taking a gold lead here. And we are starting to approach that magical portion of the game that at least in the LEC was known as Rogue time, where Rogue tend to overposition, misposition and get caught out. Well, I Hasn't think happened at Worlds the, that much. The thing is, I think people have conflicted because Rogue time was when they had a lead, a I significant mean, one. This is 300 in, gold, Betty. Yeah, but in particular... It's it was, against it Darmon Kier. That's <laughs> flipping significant in my book, Betty. <laughs> it, was, it, it, there was, it was funny because it was always 6K. 6K was the number. If they had or a 6K 10K goal if lead. it was Mad Lions. Yeah, yeah. Uh, and... Um, but yeah, if they're going even into the mid game, I, I have a lot more faith in Rogue because I think that a lot of their issues often stem from not knowing how to properly utilize the lead. But in a neutral game where you're just trading, I actually think that's a comfort space for Rogue because uh, in general, I think that they are a, a very smart team, especially if you ever have the opportunity to talk to them, they have a really great awareness of the game. But you're also saying that into Darmon, who of course showcased an excellent macro game versus FPX in our first game of the day. And uh, that game was basically what, decided by one team fight, I think it was. It was uh, and now they're going to use the Herald to break open the mid tower, which means that Darmon will be able to get the tower lead. A lot of people are grouped up. Larson is looking around as he clears out the Krugs. But I think that this tower is just going to fall. Darmon's going to disengage and they will extend their gold lead ever so slightly. And the thing for Rogue there is you don't want to overinvest into a fight. The Rift Herald's gone in, your tower's low. If you can get some cooldowns out of Darmon underneath the tower, so be it. Otherwise, back away, Darmon get exactly what they wanted. They get that little bit more gold in their back pockets and they open up the map by taking it down that mid tier one. And now Showmaker is looking for that proactive destiny up towards the topside canyon. Looking for the stun onto Larson. Supreme display of talent into the wall, but inspires on his way as well. And now the TP is coming out. The whirling death. That's a huge shutdown. That's a ton of gold. Going over to the Draven. Showmaker trying to get away from this one, but there's no lantern for him. The great Overfrost will get the slow onto Trimby. Ghost trading with Hans Summer. 
Well, slowed up, stand aside, knocks Han Summer back. One for one in the top lane. Yeah, but the gold lead went from being close to a 2,000 gold lead for Darmwan. I'd love to see how much gold Ghost got off the back of that. But Rogue, they're not slowing down just yet. Han Summer even flashes over the wall here, looking for Bevel. Has the bullet time, hits Showmaker, hits Ghost, but doesn't quite have the damage to take down Ghost and Bevel. Showmaker will fall. And Roga able to strike back. Gold still in Darmwan's favor. Ah, ha, ha, ha. Now his KDA has been cut in half. <laughs> Achievable goals, Medic. Yes. Rogue will find themselves two kills, but Draven got so much money from that shutdown. Last time we checked, he was just short of 400. Yeah. And then we didn't check for a while. Yeah. Uh, yeah, if we get the opportunity, I'd love to see, and hopefully we'll get to see in this new Axe Effect replay how much money he gets. So the collapse here, uh, Larson is just a little overextended in the top lane. Showmaker used his ultimate. The ultimate comes through. Oh, we just missed how much money he actually made off the back of that. But he there made a lot. There were tons of coins coming out <laughs> of that. <laughs> that was a lot. Look, he's got the Collector plus a BF sword now. Oh, and a cloak. So he's already working Half towards, Infinity, towards Edge. Infinity Edge already. That is a huge buy for Darwin and a huge buy for Ghost himself. Not often the carry for the LCK number one seed, but when you put money into him, he can always bring that damage to the fore. Now the map opens up just a little bit more as the dragon was actually taken by Darwin. So let's see. Oh no, it was taken by Rogue. The mountain previously was Darwin and now Rogue have got an Infernals as we stack up towards that Infernal Soul. 20 minutes in, gold lead still only, you know, less than a thousand between these two teams, Vedius, but Canyon continues to look for things here on a side lane. Oduwamne has to back away. Canyon duo together once again. You're not, that around. name is not going to stick. I don't know. I can already, I can see the hashtag trending. <laughs> but the hashtag will trend because you'll tweet it and be like, hey guys, can you retweet this for no, me, I please? I would never. <laughs> please, fans, engage with me. I mean, what I just heard is Medic asking everyone to tweet out. <laughs> hashtag Canyon. <laughs> Canyon. <laughs> Best top jungle. Um, I think Canyon has been a lot muted this early game, and I think a lot of credit needs to go to the, not what Inspired has done, but the pick. <laughs> because um, I know that Kiana, while, like, usually you go for an early gore drinker if you can, right? But if you can get, yeah, 9 point... Okay, so he's 2,000 gold ahead. Okay. <laughs> Ghost yep. is 2,000 gold ahead. Yep, 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 yep. Ghost is, in fact, 2,000 gold ahead. Uh, really, the only saving grace is the fact that Inspired is much further ahead of Canyon, and that oh, Larson, yeah. Larson is has further ahead. Yeah, yep. 1.4k is quite a big lead yeah, for Larson. Yeah, uh, This is the most Showmaker has died this tournament, uh, and they've done a pretty good job of keeping him muted. As, uh, again, Larson has been stealing camps, a lot of them. Um, but I think that this Olaf pick makes Kiana really fragile in the early game. Uh, and if you make one wrong move, it's so easy for uh, the Olaf to snowball away. And it's interesting that he is actually going for this Lethality build. He is going for a one-shot build, which against the Olaf, I'm quite surprised about. I mean, like when I look at this composition, yeah, Rise, Jace, Misfortune, if you get into any of them, yeah, I can see that you can probably just one-shot them, especially with the follow-up that you have from Dunwon. But I think this Olaf is going to be something that they have to be really careful of. But then again, double AD carry against Olaf. They do have a lot of mobility with things like the Thresh and the Lucian on their side. So perhaps they're hoping that they can kite him back. I'm really excited to see if we actually get any fights yep. because uh, these fights are really interesting when you have such a squishy team on the side of Darmwon. You can't play fights traditionally. Yeah, the, the front to back angle is not something you can rely on, but that's also what's so impressive about Darmwon. Coming into this tournament, I believe that they were the best team fighting team in the world. And even when they were at deficits against T1 in their final in the LCK, it was their impressive team fighting that really set them apart from so many other teams. Uh, and they're such a joy to watch. We've seen glimpses of it so far at this tournament. So we're very excited to see what they can do with a composition like this. I think having watched uh, the first stage of groups, some people would now contest you and say EDG, maybe, yeah. outmatching Dom 1, but still two of the very best. Rogue, a strong team fighting team. They showed it last time. They played against Dunwon in the group stage, but we're never the best in Europe. Usually that honor went over to the Mad Lions, who kind of fulfilled the Dunwon position in our league, fighting back from 6K, 10K goal behind time and time again. Right now, though, both teams very happy with a little bit of a status quo. Wave matching in the bottom lane, going to do the same in the top lane. Looks like Khan's going to go up there and push that one out. A minute and a half before the fourth dragon of the game, which would put Rogue onto soul point if they can secure it. You know, we often talk about time, and we've got to check the time because it's stopwatch check, right? Okay. Who's got it? It's, uh, I hate the item. <laughs> yeah, so um, but it looks like for now, 
only the mid laners are sitting with the stopwatch. I wouldn't be surprised to see that item just come through for a couple of other players. Inspired has just completed Starax, and also you can see the Eclipse now finished for Cannon. Infinity Edge done for Ghost. No tier 2 boots needed. He's saying, I just want maximum damage. Level 13 on the Draven, 134 stacks, but that doesn't really matter at this point. He's cashed in. He is chilling. And he is going to be so important in this upcoming fight. I believe everyone has all of their summoners up. And we are building to that moment. Because so far, nothing game-breaking has happened. It's been a lot of trading. It's been a lot of back and forth. And everyone just farming up. But... This dragon could decide a lot. Dalmon want it to avoid Rogue being on soul point. They have control for now. They're getting control through the bot wave, and they have Pryo in mid, which will secure them the crab. They're going to get themselves some vision, but look at this top wave as well. Larson has pushed it up. He's now making his way down with plenty of time to spare. Good damage down on the barrel. Oh, the putting out a world of hurt there. A little bit surprising considering how far that Jason put behind, but has been able to farm a side lane for a while and importantly it's on Bevel as well. It's not on someone like Ghost who can just heal it back up, catch a wave, catch a camp and sustain through it. Bevel is going to be half HP for this entire fight. Here we go. Showmaker is not here. He has the Destiny. Rogue trying to set up towards the top side. There Can't it is. There as well. Destiny comes out. Showmaker looking for a place to pour in the Dragon. Aggro. Ghost taking the aggro right now. Inspired looking for the smite as he goes in for the Dragon. It's secured by Canyon. Now the fight really begins. Cullen coming out. Ragnarok. Trimby going onto the back line. Looking for Bell. The hook hits. Not back. But Larson stunned up. And that's enough for Dalmon Q. They pick up two immediately. And Rogue have to run for the hill. A complete flash disconnect. Stun. Flash. Inspired. Cannons on the chase as well. Inspired. Unable to get away. Dalmon Kier get another one. Showmaker going in. Another gold card. But he will pay for it with his life. Dumb one now four members strong could turn their eyes towards the Baron. What a massive disconnect from Rogue that Trimby flashes in while the rest of the team is retreating. And then Larson ends up getting caught in the crossfire with a great hook from Beryl. Means that they go down fast. Ghost still alive. Three kills. Has damage to be able to tear down this Baron. What can Han Summer and Odo Arm they do? They're looking for the shot blast here. Han Summer still has flash, has cleanse. Odo Arm they try to get in there. Beryl low already. Dumb one in the pit. All of them below half HP, but Ghost gets a shield from the shield bow. He's stepping forward onto the Baron. Han Summer trying to back away, but the flash forward from Ghost gets him the shutdown, gets him his fifth kill, and secures Dunwon the Baron. The damage from Ghost is just relentless. He is hitting hard. Oh, but Larson wants to try and get something back. Larson Realm warping in. TP is coming out from Dunwon as well. As Shomig wants to join this party, wants to join this fight. Immediately, Larson and Tribby realize that was not the best idea, and they will back away. Wow, Ghost is so strong. But look at this disconnect that we were talking about. Look, all of Rogue, they don't get the Drake, so immediately they're on the retreat. And then Trimby flashes in and misses his ult, and then the hook comes through from Beryl. Larson then gets caught in the crossfire, and Don Juan get themselves two kills. And with the double AD carry, you know they're just going to melt through this Baron. Yes, Showmaker, he hurts his KDA a little bit more to get a little bit more. But at the end of the day, it works out very nicely for Don Juan. And you think that Rogue can maybe turn something around around the Baron, but it is not enough. Too smooth and too clean from Don Juan as Ghost comes up clutch. It was great team fighting from the LCK number one seeds and continues to put Rogue on the back foot. Now a 5,000 gold lead for Darmon, Kia and Rogue looking to defend their tier twos. Trimby and Inspired stepping forward, but Canyon, Khan and Ghost so strong. The threat to tower with this combination is absolutely phenomenal. They will take down the tier two in the bottom lane. Double AD carries, very strong for sieging. For the Baron buff as well, Rogue's wave clear becomes so much weaker. You can see the atomization difference between the two AD carries. Just Top a, lane just a as small well. One, buddy. Khan level 17 now. And overall, a great performance from Ghost, showcasing that, you know, he can definitely have his games. Obviously, one of the big points of criticism for this down one roster, but they put their trust in, in this game, and he has definitely met those expectations. And it's strange to see Draven's doing this well as the game goes on when they don't have much pressure put into them in the early game. Remember, it was only until they got that kill on Larson in the top lane that he was actually able to get any of his adoration stacks. But since then, he has been a, mon uh, a monster, a menace. He has totally taken over this game. Showmaker steps forward. There's the stun card locked in onto Larson. Cannon minion surviving in this way. Baron buff will remain for 45 seconds and Darmwon continue their relentless pressure. No inhibitor towers down yet and Rogue, if they can survive this, will be pretty happy with the fact that they haven't lost more out of this Baron as of yet. Showmaker hiding in the bush. 
taking after Faker. Hide on Bush gets the stun onto Trippy. Trippy pops the eclipse, but Khan can look for the damage. Darmon just want the tower for now. Canyon going forward, invisible. Hidden in the grass as well. Darmon, 20 seconds left on this Baron. Can Rogue hold on or will Khan push forward with the culling? There's the root. Soul up there coming out to stun the bullet time. And Khan can't step that far forward. So Rogue get themselves one kill back and they will stop the siege from Darmon. They still find themselves though with a five and a half thousand gold lead. And Khan will be back alive for the next Drake. Rogue will hold the line for now. The game is not over yet. And they have been in this position before, the last time that they met. But the difference is now that it is Ghost who has all of the money. It is Ghost who has all of the damage. And getting on top of him is going to be no easy feat. Just a reminder for the stakes on this game. Rogue losing this does not lock them out of a tiebreaker possibility. They would have to beat FPX and then hope Cloud9 lose to Darmon later on. However, if Rogue win this and beat FPX, they can guarantee themselves a spot in the quarterfinals with no tiebreakers played. Darmon obviously already first in the group, obviously already going to the quarterfinals, but looking for that 6-0. Something we have seen a few times in the past from the LCK. The last time we saw it from Khan on Longju. Yeah. That was the crazy group of the, the triple two fours with the tiebreakers. That was what that group was. And Fnatic was able to make it out that time round. Showmaker. Destiny in towards the bottom side. So going to isolate oh, Trimby. Very nice. Trimby going in by himself. But once again, the fight is split. Supreme display of talent. Larson has to flash the wall. Exhausted. Showmaker going in. There's a round warp as well as Larson dodges back into it. And Rogue immediately disengage. But the positioning on the Destiny from Showmaker was sublime. Yeah, just really great flank from Showmaker. Creating that pincer made it very difficult for Rogue to commit to the fight. And these engages from Trimby are just not connecting. It is really difficult for Rogue to get any really reliable follow-up when all of their engage is pretty much just this Leona, and then they have to run at their opposition, and Darmon is just utilizing their disengage tools, things like the Thresh Box, the Draven E, the Kiana Ultimate, the fact that Lucian can kite so easily. With only one engage tool, Darmon is keeping Rogue at arm's length, and Rogue can't find any successful fights. Keeping with an even longer arm's length as well with the triple rapid fire cannons picked up. One on Showmaker, one on Khan, one on Ghost. Draven and Lucian, not the longest range AD carries, but having that extra range for the initial burst, for a single axe, for a single double shot, can make so much of a distance because it just means that Rogue really can't start a fight on their own terms. They're always going to be chunked out by this down one lineup first. Now, Ghost is going to step forward. Wasn't spotted on that ward as far as I can see. And uh, we'll just catch this wave alongside Bevel. Of course, the safety of a Thresh in this situation means that Ghost can be a little bit more aggressive, even waiting to see if Han Summer is the one to overextend. Darmon, they're just so patient. They navigate their way through the jungle so well. They're not going to clear out this vision. They know the Baron spawns in 15 seconds. They're pushing out the top wave. Just their, their map control is so clean. Good ult. Solar Flare onto Ghost, looking to lock him down before he can get out. Bullet time coming in as well, and Ghost is down! Shut down for Rogue! The singular target that they would have wanted most has been killed off, and now Rogue could look towards the Baron. They ha he had no cleanse, and the CC comes through from Trimby. Now the hope is alive for Rogue. Larson stunned into the hook. Larson almost down, but he pops the stop just in time. Supreme is there, Tanner will come out. It's a double for Khan. Benny, the hope was there for Rogue, but immediately it slammed right back in their faces. Canyon and Khan can do no wrong. And Summer tries to get away, but Khan gets the quadra. Can he do it? Can he find the penta here for Darmwon Kia? Canyon's going to chase down Inspired. Khan hungrily, greedily looking for it. Inspired is not going to give it to him. <laughs> he TPs. Canyon goes in for the damage. Khan comes in. Couple more shots. A penta for Khan. A beautiful display of when Ghost falters, Khan picks up the pieces. He was the secondary carry. He was the guy that could deal the damage should Ghost fall, and he comes up clutch. Beautiful display from Khan. He secures himself the Penta. He will secure the Baron for Darwan, and they are looking to go 5-0 in the group. And for a moment, Rogue had hope with the catch on Ghost. They thought they could step forward, but this stun card into hook combination on Larson just gets rid of all their damage.
Just really well played once again from Damwon, utilizing the fog, the double kill coming out from Khan initially. Odo Omne trying to get something back onto Showmaker, but he's too split from his team. Canyon then flashing in, forcing the flash out from Hansama means that Khan can flash in and secure that one. And then it's just a matter of cleaning up the fight. The stopwatch has come through. Showmaker will not fall. And it's just very well played from the side of Damwon. Once again, showcasing how talented they are when it comes to the 5v5 or 4v5 in this situation. Just their team fighting is on another level right now. You can see, look at relation there for Darwin. Even Showmaker after destroying his KDA. At least his teammate got a pentakill. That's how you do it as a team here now with Baron Buff. Darwin looking to close this one out. 9,000 gold there, lead. You can see Ghost, zero in that last fight, but you don't need him when Khan is putting out 6,000 damage in a fight like this. Uh, now, the inhibitor line has to be the next target for Darmon. Still, Rogue will try to defend. But uh, 10,000 gold down, it's a pretty Herculean task. It certainly is. Darmon, it was a very slow early game. They played very controlled. The kills have been close, but the gold really hasn't. They played very well around Khan in the early game top side. The fact that they were able to find that pick and get that money onto Ghost early, he was really their big transition in the mid game. And really, they've just punished the mistakes from Rogue. Their composition is so difficult to actually get engaged on. And uh, they leveraged the fact that there was only really one engaged tool on the side of Rogue, and they played around it beautifully. Even after they get themselves a pick, Rogue can't really convert into much. And now we see Khan maybe overstepping a bit. Solid play goes wide inspired, looking for the slow here as well, but he just gets to the it's lantern. Stop watches the double up as well, just in case that was going to kill him. Bullet time rips through them, but only rips through the grass there. Needed a little bit of a trim, according to Hans Summer, as he couldn't find his mark. But now that's a lot of ultimates used, and the, the dragon is about to spawn. 10 seconds, that will be the soul for Darmwan. Notice that they have the Draven ult, they still have the Threshold, they still have the Supreme Display of Talent. Khan just went back to base and grabbed himself an Infinity Edge, so he is now full build. And that, that was just Khan. Okay, that was also Barrel's ultimate. Uh, it's just the slow. 99% slow in the choke point, just in case Rogue wanted to step forward. Barrel puts it down. Infernal Soul now secured for Darmwan. And uh, they are looking pretty hungrily at Trimby. Gold card locked in. Trimby trying to get away with the Eclipse as the Everfrost. The route continues as Barrel. We'll look for the hook here. Another gold card into the hook. Trippy doesn't get to move. He jets away right at the end, but the Cullen coming in from Khan at the side. Larson pops a stopwatch, tries to pop Beryl as well. The Everfrost will slow them up. Showmaker has another gold card locked in. Whirling Death does not quite have the damage, but Khan does to take down the mid lane inhibitor tower. Now bot lane the target for one as they will rip through this base in seconds with their double AD carries, and then they'll run straight back out. Darmwan can be pretty happy with what they got off the back of that. Yes, they didn't win the team fight, but they did enough damage to force Rogue back into their own base. Oh, but Rogue, they're not done yet. They're looking to try and get something back as Larson TP's in. Oh, oh no. And if that's not indicative of Larson's performance at World so far, I don't know what is. Larson pops the stopwatches immediately as he gets out of the TP. Counter TP coming in here as Khan wants to join the fight. Canyon low, Beryl the same, but all it takes is a single gold card into a hook and immediately inspired his chunk to half. Larson caught out, Solar Flare will connect. Trippy diving on the back line, but he's 1v4 and he's only a support. Khan goes godlike. And now Rogue, three players left, waiting to be eaten by these hungry, hungry wolves that are Darmwon Kia. The TP's coming in behind and Showmaker's like, Larson, this is how it's done. Locks in the stun card, looking for Han Summer, who immediately cleanses and dodges away from the wild card, so he will survive. But Canyon stepping forward, Showmaker going in as well, and Ghost is on the chase. Axe in the back of Inspired, takes him down to a quarter HP. Khan comes in with a culling, and it does exactly that. Locket will be used to battle can't save himself, but it's all done, but the next is falling here. Darmwon Kia will continue their perfect record. Hunt Summer dead, Odo 2. And Darmwon, a couple of mistakes perhaps in the mid game, but go 5 and 0 oh in their group. Dawn 1 continue to separate themselves from the rest of the pack here in Group A. And while this does not mean that Rogue is completely out, they now play up against FPX. They have to beat FBX. They have to beat FBX. And C9 really wants that to happen. <laughs> uh, because if C9 if I understand correctly, if C9... Do you want me just to do it? Because I know it exactly. Tell me, yeah. Okay, so 
if FPX lose to Rogue, then we could have a three-way tie with C9 still losing to Darmon because they've won two games, right? However, if FPX beat Rogue, C9 have to beat Darmon to get into a tiebreaker. Yes. However, if if FPX lose to Rogue, yes. then C9 find themselves at two and three, yes. which means that if C9 beat, beat Darmon, they then just get out of the group with no tiebreakers. Correct. So you kind of want Rogue to win, North America. <laughs> yep, that's the way it works. The experts will soon tell us tell you more about Darmon's win and look ahead towards the upcoming fight for quarterfinals in Group A. So don't go anywhere and watch out.